Hello everyone, welcome to Joe the Auto Guy YouTube channel. Today we are focusing on a Ford Taurus, which is the same as the Flex and Lincoln MKT. Um, this is also similar to the Explorers as well. But we're going to start off with removing that front wheel. Maybe some 19 mil lug nuts on there. Might be a hubcap or something. This is just a steel wheel, this is a police interceptor model, but the process is the same for all. You take that wheel off, and I'm going to adjust it so that you can see it in the camera better. So we're going to use a 17 mil to remove the caliper pin bolts. These are held in with uh, about 24, 25 foot pounds of torque, so light impact can take these right out. There will be a rubber um, end piece on one of the boot pins. You want to make sure that goes back in the right location. Keeps harmonic squealing noises down, you want to keep it in there. Using a small pry bar, you can pry inward on the caliper itself to kind of free it up. And we're going to place that to the side. I'm going to use a caliper hanging bracket and then I'm uh, going to set it up and I'm kind of holding the caliper on the spring. You can buy these pretty inexpensive off Amazon, I'll have a link in the description. Here's going to slide those brake pads out of there. They might be stuck. Um, these ones got smoked pretty good. Because it's got smoked pretty good and super warped warp rotors. Um, using my caliper pressing tool, um, I'll have a link in the description for this tool as well, but you can just use a C-clamp with an old brake pad too. This just pushes both pistons in at the same time. That way we for sure know this caliper moves in and out freely and to put it back on, uh, pistons are all the way back in. It's going to get positioned off to the side. And then we're going to use an 18 mil swivel socket in the Milwaukee half inch impact wrench and lock these bolts right out. These things will have Loctite on them, so they will be kind of stubborn if you're doing hand tools. We'll be able to remove that caliper bracket, no problem. Slide that off. You can slide that brake pad off too. Now we're going to slide it over and remove the rotor. There is a T40 Torx bit that holds these on. I have a good issue, uh, some issues with getting them out, but if you take the Torx bit, hammer it a couple times as I am here, and then I just use a regular quarter inch drive impact, and I can kind of remove it with ease. Actually, I'm using a 3 8 one on this one, but you see how easy it comes out. There's really no effort. You can smack the rotor with the hammer. It should come free. Um, and as you see, normally I'd have to hit it, but this one slid right off. They had some lube on there from the backside of whoever did the brake job before. Thank you. <laughs> you want to clean any uh, rust and corrosion off the hub. Um, this has kind of a recessed hub line, so you don't really have to go super deep. But this one's super clean already, but if you have any half heavy rust scale, you got to use a die grinder, wire brush, anything you can to get that off, make the surface flat. You can see that I'm using even just a roll lock disc and I'm just shining it right up. This one was actually very clean, very easy specimen. Very clean one, but you just have these two outer spots. Clean up any rust and corrosion that you have and you won't have a problem. Just want to make sure that rotor sits flat on there. So now we're going to go to the caliper bracket. Um, basically, you're going to have these new pins. We're going to open up the brake pads. Some, if you have aftermarket brake pads, they won't have these little abutment clips in them. And you're absolutely going to, you know, I recommend replacing them. It's the best way to have non squealing brakes. Um, sometimes you got to clean them up. Uh, but you want to clean the rust and corrosion from both sides. So you want the inner caliper bracket and those pieces cleaned up if you have to. Gotta make sure you do these in the right direction, otherwise you will have a squealing rotor and you'll have to take it all back apart and do it again. Which, you don't want that at all. So I'm just using that Milwaukee right angle impact drill, or in, impact grinder, and we're going to clean up all that rust and corrosion. I'll make sure it's super clean, no rust in there at all. This will stop your brake pads from moving freely in and out. And you don't want that. Once 
once you get them all cleaned up, you're going to start snapping them in. Make sure they go the right direction, like I said. Those outer little loop pieces go towards the outside of the caliper bracket, not inside on the rotor riding surface. They should just snap right into place. There should be no issues on that part. If they are, you might have the wrong ones, or you have too much rust and corrosion in there. So you got to make sure you got it in. I've seen people grind brake pads down and stuff for this problem ever since I've been doing this. I have not had to do that ever. Sometimes you get some badly, real bad aftermarket ones, but most times I haven't had to deal with it at all. Now we're going to open up that rotor. Stubborn packaging. These are Ford factory ones. They are going to uh, have a coating on them. They will look a little different. They've redesigned them a few times. These keep them from warping so bad. But we're going to spray them off with a little bit of brake clean. This just gets any residue, anything off of it. Um, these ones coated, I don't even come with an oil on them, but some rotors they have shipping oil on and you don't want that on there. Um, it will soak into the brake pad and cause premature wear or a soft pedal if they get super heated. We're going to slide. You'll see a couple dirt marks on that rotor. I'll wipe them off when I'm done. I usually just put the either a lug nut or a rotor screw back on. That way it holds it in place real quick for you. Um, but if it's there, I like to just put it back because it was already there. They don't need to be super torqued. Oh, look at me. I go ahead and drop it. Don't drop it like I just did. It's easy. Get it all tied into place. We're going to go to the other side because I forgot to keep the camera rolling. So we are on the other side of the vehicle. I've already completed all the steps that you saw in the last one. Sliding that caliper bracket back on. We're going to torque that down. Make sure those bolts thread nice and easy into it because you do not want to cross thread this. Otherwise you'll be putting a knuckle in. I'm just kind of buzzing them in with the impact. Don't super torque them down. Because then we're going to use a torque wrench. And bring these things to what they're supposed to be. 76 foot-pounds is what we need to tighten these down to on the front. We're using a universal socket, you don't, you know, using it kind of straight. You can use a straight socket or anything, it's just what I had right next to me at the time. Shouldn't affect torque too much as long as you're straight. We're using a digital torque wrench, torque it down. Now we're going to slide the new brake pads in. The little triangle ones go on the inside. Make sure your bootman clips are in. You can see I actually dropped this one. Make sure it sits in the same spot. And you can see I actually made a mistake there. That big square angle one with those two pushback squealer pieces goes on the outside. The right angle triangle one goes right in the inside. That way they don't super spring back on you and wonder why you can't get your brake pads in right. It'll kind of spring back a little bit, but it should stay in place. Now we're going to take those brake pins that we took out earlier. I'm going to use a little bit of brake clean. Clean off that old silicone. Make sure you clean any corrosion off the pins. If you have it. And use our, this is the supplied caliper grease, but you can also use Ford stuff, whatever you're supposed to have. So 
So you use that supplied caliper grease and just smear it on. Don't put too much on, but just make sure you're giving those caliper pins a nice new you know, coating. That way this lasts a long time and you're doing a proper brake service. Now that we've done that, you're going to take your caliper Slide it on to the caliper bracket. Make sure you keep those boots nice and straight. It'll make it so you can slide those caliper pin bolts right back in the spot. No problem. The no boot is in the lower. The one with the rubber boot on the end, or rubber insulator, goes in the top. And I'm just going to tighten those down in. All right, so we're just torquing those down to 25 foot-pounds and then almost complete. We got to put our wheel back on, torque your particular wheel down to its factory spec. I'm just zipping these on with an impact real quick. I will check them with a torque wrench when I'm done. This one currently is 100 foot-pounds. I just like to spin the lug nuts on real quick, put my Milwaukee impact wrench into a low torque setting. And then make sure you press your brake pad. If you do this before you move the vehicle, you will have no problems. If you start the car, put it in reverse, you will have no brakes. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope this video helped you, and we'll see you on the next one.